Coming up, a remarkable insight into the language of influence and how you can use it for your practice. I'm Dr. Charles Martin of MasterYourPractice.com. You can call me Charles. So simple, so powerful. When I first met my new patient, Margaret, I felt a strong emotional connection immediately. I liked her. She needed exactly what I knew I could provide. Yay. I listened actively to what she had to say. She had had a difficult time with dentistry for her whole life. She was ashamed of her teeth and frightened. Her smile was a betrayal to who she really was. I repeated back to her what I thought she had said. Her face took on a very confused and disconnected look. I was bewildered. I thought my rapport building was going so well. Her words seemed to indicate agreement. Her body language did not agree. Now what? We ever taught active listening? This was a technique originated from Carl Rogers and taught in the late 60s and early 70s. Active listening has become the supposed standard for listening to others in many circles. It's better than not paying attention. It is a form of listening. The problem is that the context of the words used by the speaker is different than the context of the listener. Context is composed of the life experience, understandings, feelings, thoughts, opinions, and lessons learned by the speaker. The language used by the speaker is a reflection of this content. In active listening, the listener is supposed to repeat back to the speaker what the listener has interpreted that the speaker has said. It's better than nothing. It just misses the mark. Often anyway. Too often. The context of the listener is always different than the speaker. It can't be anything else but this. Why? Words do have meanings that are common to all at a logical level. The emotional context of the speaker's words are unique to her based on her life experience, mental filters, perceptions, beliefs, and values. The emotional background conveyed by the words cannot be experienced or felt or interpreted the same. The best you can hope for is achieving a similar, but not the same, emotional context by using your interpretation. This is almost good enough. Why is this important to you? Here's why because you want to communicate to your patient in the most effective way possible. When you speak in the language of your patient, you're effectively tapping into the emotional feelings and context, which is meaningful and impactful for your patient. What words resonate best with a patient? Pretty simple, really. The words a patient has already used. The easy foolproof method of doing this is to use the exact same words used by your patient. This isn't almost the same words. It's the exact same words, verbatim. Doing this is like pushing a button mentally that tells her you understand her. Then you can tell her your story, give your finding to find influence to be a lot simpler. Write down what she tells you exactly as she describes her problems and what she wants you to do about it. Put the words in quotes in your notes. Use those same words to begin your prescription for care. I repeated back to Margaret her exact words she had used to describe her condition and what she wanted. I agreed with her that it was a bad and difficult situation. Her words. She brightened up. Her body language changed. I knew I'd hit upon the right way to talk with her. Margaret turned into a successful patient relationship. She had an extensive reconstruction and is today one of the most satisfied of all patients. All this occurred because of saying the right thing. She told me what the right thing was as I asked her the probing questions and use verbatim listening. Here's a direct hint. This works more than just patients. Who do you know that you would like to establish a better or strengthened relationship with? How will you use verbatim listening with your patients? How can you use this with your staff? There's a lot more of at MasterPractice.com. I'm Dr. Charles Martin, but you can call me Charlie. Until next time.